It started as sleet and quickly changed to snow, creating a mess on the roads and power outages for thousands. A winter storm that brought more snow than we have seen in nearly a decade with a foot or more in most areas. Today, schools are already closing for Monday as people start finding ways to dig out. A special edition of KRCG 13 News begins now. Seems like we're not getting any headway. We get one road opened up and a couple hours later it's covered back up and you can't hardly tell that you've been down it. It's the same story across the state of Missouri as plow truck drivers make progress. They find their work quickly disappearing as a fresh new layer of snow falls. Much of the region woke up today to snow totals ranging from 10 to 20 inches depending on where you live. The snow is no doubt pretty. We're taking a live look now at Jefferson City. It's calming and peaceful. That's until you're out driving in it. The roads across the region are truly different depending on where you live. In Jefferson City and Columbia, the majority of the roads now just seem to be wet. But in rural areas, there are sections of roads that have yet to be touched. Good afternoon, I'm Megan Lane. And I'm Kermit Miller. To those of you who have been watching the Chargers Patriots football game, we are glad you are sticking with us. To those of you who are tuning in for the NCAA basketball matchup between Michigan State and Penn State, we'll join the game after this special, special winter weather update. Indeed. We have t live team coverage for you this afternoon. Mark Slavitt is live in Columbia where thousands remain without power. Our KRCG 13's Lexi Petrovich and Megan Sanchez will join us momentarily. But first, Zach Paul has been tracking this storm for days. He is back this afternoon for us. Zach, are we out of the woods now? Yeah, I think we are. We are still finding just a few light flurries falling here and there. Overall, things are uh, definitely a lot more quiet today than they've been the last couple of days that is for sure. Here's a live look over Columbia and you can see that still snow covered across the area but not seen much in the way of flurries coming down. Been able to compile a list of snow totals from across the area and this is what it looks like on the map. We've got a little area of mostly Callaway County but it does include out towards uh, Ashland and up to around Mexico where we have several areas that are between that 15 to even 20 inches of snow. Most areas here have received at least a foot of snow or just under a foot of snow. And then you get down towards the lake area in Camden, that's a little area. They had less lesser snow amounts or fewer uh, snow totals there, but still upwards of about three to maybe six inches. And then you get south of the lake area and they had rain most of the day on Friday and even had a little bit of rain yesterday afternoon. And so some of those snow totals again less than three inches a really tight gradient here on the southern edge while we have a wide range of nine to even 12 inch plus totals to the north. Now, how is January rank? Well, this snow total just for uh, this weekend here. In fact, we're at 16.9 inches officially. That comes out of Columbia Regional Airport. The snowiest Januarys again. These are monthly totals and we're already sitting here in the top five and that value is likely to increase and I'll show you why coming up here in just a minute. Right now we're still finding temperatures pretty steady here over the last several days in the Oh, 28, 29 degree range, about 33 to 34. So that's still where we're sitting this afternoon. As we look at the extended forecast here, at least through your overnight hours, temperatures are going to remain again in that same range. We'll fall to about 28, 29 degrees as we get into the morning tomorrow. As we look at the region, clouds and radar, there's still a little bit of that light snow across parts of eastern Missouri into southern Illinois. A lot of cloud cover back off to the west. We have high pressure that's sliding south from Canada. That is going to reinforce some of the drier air that we've seen. That's why we're seeing a lot of this snow continue to deteriorate and evaporate as a light northerly wind continues here tonight. Now, as we look at future casts, we'll fast forward to we'll go into the, the morning here for your Monday. We're going to start the day off with some cloud cover by the afternoon, though. We will find more sunshine that will begin a pretty good melting process. But with those same clear skies as we get into your Tuesday morning, temperatures will plummet and we're going to find a cold start to Tuesday morning that could create some refreezing out on the roadways. But that same clear sky will allow for quite a bit of sunshine as we build into next Tuesday. Now let's fast forward this to next weekend and show you with another possibility for some snow. Here's the afternoon. We're dry for most of your day Friday, but by the time midnight rolls around on Saturday, we'll start to see some rain possibly mixed with some snow Friday night into the morning on Saturday. And we were looking uh, at a possibility for some more snow this time next weekend. This storm system looks to be a very similar track as the previous one that we just got out of. 
with drier conditions once again as we look ahead to your Sunday. As far as snow totals, still too early to pinpoint that, and it's possible this track could change and we could end up more on the warm side of that, meaning we could get a little bit more rain, but it is something we're going to be watching closely for you as we get closer to next weekend. In the meantime, temperatures tomorrow on the cooler side, highs in the mid 30s. We'll get into the 40s for Tuesday and Wednesday as we start to see a lot more sunshine. And then there towards the end of the week, we'll see rain for your Thursday and that storm system continues to linger into the weekend. And notice as temperatures drop into the 20s on Saturday, that's going to be a lot more conducive for some of that snow. All right, Zach, thank you. Now we want to get the latest on the loss of power in the city of Columbia. Thousands of Columbia water and light customers were left in the dark and in the cold when the storm rolled through Friday night. KRCG 13's Mark Slavitt is tracking that situation for us. Well, Megan and Kermit, that's right. Uh, I've got some good news out of Columbia. Now that's a huge improvement after city officials reported more than 8,000 customers without power this morning. Now I did talk to utility customer What's Taylor Coleman in Columbia this, today. Now she had no electricity for several hours yesterday. Today her power is back at her Columbia apartment on the south side of town. Heavy and wet snow in Coleman's neighborhood forced trees and limbs to fall on distribution lines. Now Coleman tells me she is happy to have electricity again and we'll hear from uh, uh, Taylor Coleman on our news tonight at 10. I also just got a text from Columbia Mayor Brian Treese moments ago, and he said he is very proud of his water and light crews for having only 59 customers without power at this hour, and those crews are out on the road right now trying to restore that power as quickly as possible. Now, city officials say the main roads in Columbia are safe to drive on. Secondary roads in Columbia neighborhoods are still a little slick. City officials say all residential streets should be clear by Wednesday. Reporting live in Columbia, Mark Slavitt, KRCG 13. Collapsed the uh, roof of the Columbia Canine Sports Center. The roof uh, collapsed yesterday afternoon. The owners of that building tell KRCG no one was inside when the roof gave way because all of the center events were canceled on Saturday because of the snowstorm. The building is a large canvas covered complex. Inside, the business offers a variety of training and obedience classes for dogs. The owners shut off their natural gas lines as a precaution. The building on I-70 Drive Southeast uses gas to power large heaters in the building. The owners say they have insurance to cover the damage and plan to make repairs as soon as possible. No word yet on an estimate to the damage. Now that the snow has stopped falling, people are digging out. Megan Sanchez has been staying in touch with local plow companies, but first, Lexi Petrovich is live in Jefferson City. Lexi? Well, Kerman and Megan, the highways and the residential streets in this area of Jefferson City are looking much clearer. There were some little flurries earlier today, but that seems to have completely subsided now. I walked around today and spoke with some Jefferson City residents about what they were doing to handle all the snow in front of their house and on their cars. Some people were outside making snowmen and enjoying all of the snow that they have, but a lot of people also spent their day shoveling snow. I spoke with one Jefferson City resident who says it's going to take him a really long time. Time. Probably another 30 minutes or an hour, and that's not all of it. That's just getting uh, to the point where I can get in and out. <laughs> Shoveling snow or even pushing a heavy snowblower can cause a sudden increase in blood pressure or even heart rate. So it's important that all of the people that are out, uh, outside shoveling today are mindful of those health risks. Reporting live in Jefferson City, Lexi Petrovich, KRCG 13. Good advice. Thanks, Lexi. KRCG 13's Megan Sanchez caught up with the Holt Summit snowplow that's been at it since Friday. Megan. Well, Kermit and Megan, Lyndon Ream tells me that he bought a truck last year thinking he could get some extra work in the winter by plowing snow, but he says he had no idea he would be this busy. I caught up with him this afternoon as he worked on a long driveway with a hill and gravel in Holt Summit. He says both those can make it a little tricky. He brings along his furry friend Tuffy to keep him company, but overall he says plowing hasn't been too bad. He says he's had plenty of customers.